This is Tokyo Shemp with Serious Business. I'm not going to edit nothing from nobody. Just going to talk and then hit pause. On edit, I did some light editing. End of edit. Austin Pelly quit Fault Lines. I think I deserve full credit for getting Shane to quit and then Austin Pelly. And on that point, I think I'm ready to retire as a troll. People can't handle this greatness combined with humility. They can't grok how male autism can have a female type. They don't get how someone can be smart because they have autism. It enables someone to maintain incredible balance. Focus. Focus is the word. And balance, too. If there are no intrusive elements into one's immediate vicinity, I personally have autism, social anxiety. I don't know if I necessarily have agoraphobia because I do like to go out there into the world. I'm introverted. That's about it. I don't have narcissism. No way. Someone being bad at blogging or bad at making a joke or mediocre at this or that doesn't make them a narcissist. It just means they weren't funny or they weren't that insightful. I may be done singing and then uploading it to the YouTube channel. I'm thinking more if I'm going to put something onto the channel, it's going to be myself speaking as a video blogger. Radio, I'm thinking radio, that sort of presentation. I don't know what's up with Putin and Ukraine. I'm actually going to come right out of the closet right here and admit that I am 100% Ukrainian. That's where my relatives came from. Somehow. It's true. I'm not just saying it. My parents were born in America. It would be the parents before them that were from another country. The country would be Ukraine. You call it the Ukraine if you're Russian. It's sort of making fun of them. Or it's about them losing their freedom in the past. I know all about that Soviet revolution and how all the other countries became part of their Iron Curtain due to the stamps. The stamps reinforce into someone the location of the countries, and you get a look-see at stuff. Perhaps a simpleton version of it, but there's still much truth to the simpleton angle. David Bohm referred to this as the implicate order. I'm remaining ahead of every single curve out there. People are going to retreat from the internet, from participating on it, I'm pretty sure that people are still on the internet due to the addiction element of it. I imagine as a social theorist that they are retreating. They are forcibly retreating from participation. Too much has leaked out giving the common man, the common person, a fanfare for the common person, for the common troll, for the common super troll. They know, they see what... They saw what the Snowden documents were. They're going to see something from myself, even if they just see it just once. My message, that is, they will see. They will see it. And then I took it to further studies, in which I cropped out Jamal Thomas's sunglasses, for example. One could see the teleprompters, so Shane quit. Now this other guy, Austin Pelly, quit. I diagnosed him within seconds of himself having autism. There's a digit test. One can look at the digits. One can look at the mouth a little bit. We Aspies tend to have cute little mouths. Backfires on us when we have to go to the dentist, but it's quite effective with the ladies. They like us cute Aspie types. They get a kick out of us. We're very, we're innovative with words, things like that. If we're into you, if we feel comfortable with you, we're like, Decent company, so to speak. Maybe I should say a word or two about UG Krishnamurti. The guy was rich. He had an easy cakewalk to travel the world. A lot of what he said was just ripping off the world teacher, Krishnamurti. Just ripping him off, stalking him, so to speak. That's my new catchphrase, so to speak. So to speak. That UG Krishnamurti became bitter at the end. He was just bitter, period. And then by the end, there's one last video available of UG Krishnamurti. Oh man, 
he's so bitter. So the key to life is to not be bitter. Now my thing is, I get bitter in context. So that means I'm not bipolar and I don't have borderline personality. I need something specific to set me off. It's called sensory overload, but I'm working on it. And I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to figure things out better late than never. I didn't know I had autism until a few years ago. I feel embarrassed that I didn't realize it because it seems so obvious. Once one knows what to look for, things become obvious. They become easy to find, to identify. I've given up on media and electoral politics. But that doesn't mean I've given up on life or reality. I've given up on social media. I gave up on social media a long time ago. What I'm doing here is a little different. It's a lot different. I don't think I have anything to do with anything else. I think I'm free. I'm pretty sure I'm free. Now, what to do with this freedom? I'm basically getting into my stamps more. I have a plan to go out there today and exercise to go for a bike trip. I have to just first check to make sure the ice is cleared completely. I like living in the colder climates, which helps with the stamps. Warmer weather is rough on those things. The sun is rough on those things. You can't leave them um, in immediate light. The sunlight, I mean. I've been up for about three hours. I've been getting up early the last couple of days, today and yesterday. I'll even it out with a nap later on. I take a heart pill. I have heart disease. I had a mild heart attack, yet that still is called heart disease. Luckily, I'm in the best stage for that. A lot of people have health concerns. Folks are going to want to keep in mind that when they hit 30, 40, your metabolism is going to shut down. And that's when you're going to easily put on some weight if you're not aware of that. So you got to stay active. That's helped me. The biggest mistake I made was smoking tobacco. The problem was I was living in Ireland a long time ago as a young college student. That's where I got my social theory pedigree. And they didn't have the agriculture to grow marijuana, and I liked it. I've always liked marijuana, the sativa. I always liked it. I've always seen the benefits to it. It didn't make me dumb. It didn't do anything bad. What did bad to me was the cigarettes. So that pretty much gave me a heart attack to go with the genetics because I had a heart. I should have been more careful because it's running in my family. On my dad's side, I had to get heart attacks. It wasn't as painful as I thought a heart attack was. You hear about those things your whole life, even as a kid. The whole image I had of it was like a debilitating pain. It was debilitating, but I thought it would go away. I mean, it hurts, but it didn't hurt as bad as a toothache. I'm going by my memory because it was a few years back. But what got me thinking about this was that I have to take this pill for the scar tissue. Every heart attack causes scar tissue until they figure out how to fix that stuff. There's that scar tissue there. I guess I have a propensity for my heart to skip more than most people. But people can have their heart skip and there's nothing wrong about it or wrong with them. It'll just happen once in a while. Of course, talk it out with the doctor. Don't go by what I'm saying. I try my best. I'm not a professional doctor. It's difficult to find things to talk about when one is off the medium. It's been known forever, just about going backwards, indefinite backwards. No one knows what happened before the Big Bang. How can something exist? How does anything exist from a first point? Like, where did all that stuff come from to create the Big Bang? It's the same question every time. It's the fundamental question. It goes beyond, is there a God or not? To put it into a God question seems to be passing the buck from the other question. And the other question can't be answered. We know it's impossible to say what came first, the chicken or the egg. The chicken or the egg, right. The egg creates the chicken. Then the chicken creates the egg. So what created what? They're creating both. They're creating the species. The species grows out of the earth, whatever's in this area of the universe. 
how can there be an everywhere? How can there be no stop to space? What's on the other side of space? How can space never end? Or if space ends, how does it end? What's on the other side of space? Now I'm assuming space is dark matter because they're saying it's everywhere and it makes up a big chunk of numbers needed for crunching by theoretical physicists, I imagine, I suppose, I opine. If there was no space, we would be crushed into nothingness. Nothingness would not include dark matter. Dark matter is clearly what needs to be figured out. I don't know if they'll be able to. And even if they figure it out, it'll, I think it'll end up being a, a so what? That still doesn't get anywhere near to the fundamental questions. Or question. It's really one question. There's one absolute question that needs to be answered. Or it can't be answered. It seems like it can't be answered. The only thing that could have been answered was to develop the greatest Earth we could have done. That was the only answer. That was the only possibility. And that should have emerged from the 13 to 1500s, when it went from church to government. So we're basically screwed. It's good in a way that everyone is against what Putin's doing. But it's also bad in a way that this could even be going on. Look at American politics. It's undemocratic. It boils down to what WikiLeaks, what Julian Assange leaked out. Well, he didn't leak it out. He's more of a publisher. Sorry for ever making it seem I'm calling him a leaker. I mean, he is a leaker. Those are leaks. But I believe in leaks. I believe in justice, but this is a no-win situation. This is like no chance, no possibility. This is utter injustice that we're born into. It makes no freaking sense from how we're conditioned, how we're raised, to how things really are. It makes no sense why nothing ever gets better. You'd think somewhere along the line there would have been a normalization of good, of justice. But it's just all smokes and mirrors over and over again. If we can't elect a president, if we're provided the choices, so it's a fake choice, it's a theater, it's theatrics, it's called superdelegates. There's no debating. So the medium's dead, the democracy's dead. Yeah, that's rough to hear. It's rough to say. Then you got losers. All those shows are losers who are working for the military. I proved it. Because what else are they up to? I'm saying I'm not a random person, but that I studied sociology for a master's. I read all the books, like philosophy, meaning life stuff, social psychology, the roots of fascism, critical theory, the Frankfurt School, those kind of people, Eric Fromm, Herbert Marcuse, but more than that, I'm not better than anyone, it's just what I got into, and I did it from a meaning of life, nothing in it for me. The only thing that's in it for me is that this is what I was born into, this is what I was born from. I like the idea of everyone equal, everyone allowed to grow, everyone provided. The internet is speeding up the self-publishing. So what happened was you can't have that, so that's where they consolidated into the stuff Snowden revealed. And that meant no more freedom of speech, no more freedom of association. Being in a free speech cage is not free speech. 